This is footage of the demonstration outside the Danish Embassy in London, provided to CBN News by the NIFA Foundation, an anti-terrorism group. What you can't see in this video is that one of the demonstrators is dressed as a suicide bomber. Okay, you are troops out of Iraq and if you do not pull your troops out you will get bloodshed on the streets of London. Again no one was arrested. A recent survey shows that 40% of British Muslims want Islamic Sharia law in the United Kingdom. Sharia imposes punishments like amputations and stonings. <laughs> There is reported to be a growing rape epidemic of unveiled women in Europe. Halimi was held for ransom and then tortured to death by Muslim immigrants who phoned his family and recited to them verses from the Quran as their son screamed in agony. <laughs> And we will see the believers victorious. We will see Israel destroyed. We will see the European crusaders destroyed. And we will see Islam dominate. Muslim patrol, don't, 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 don't be allowing us to puke outside the mosque. Do you understand? Do you understand what we're saying? It's a Muslim patrol. Muslim patrol, move away from the mosque. Move away from the mosque now. Okay? Do you understand? This is democracy. This is freedom. This is secularism. We need Islam. Move away from the mosque. Go away now. Don't come back. Don't come back. Don't come back. Keep your mouth closed. Do not consume alcohol. It is haram for your, for your own necks. Right. We don't respect those who disobey God. We don't respect them. I am so We don't care if you're appalled era. at all. Muslim patrol. Muslim 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 it's era. Great Britain. This we don't care. It's not so Great Britain. Yeah, not so Great Britain. Do you understand? It's it's like this. Vigilantes implementing Islam upon your own necks. Our history is based on our Christian uh, understanding of the world, um, that we've built a country on this basis, but in the past uh, decade or so, we seem to have lost it. We've uh, emphasized monetary culturalism to the point of losing our own roots. This man, Amjam Chowdhury, is their leader. He demands Islamic law, known as Sharia, to be the law of the land. Drugs will be banned, pornography will be banned, gambling will be banned. Chowdhury's strategy is to pit Muslims against everyone else to create tension. We do expect to enter into a struggle, if you like, of words, and maybe even more than that, uh, before we can see the fruition of uh, the Sharia, really, on state level. Muslims are here to stay! Muslims are here to stay! In. What Chowdhury is implying is that how radicalization evolves here in Britain and in Europe will in some part be a model for what the United States can expect. <laughs> This area here, I used to come down this area with my mum when I was younger. I used to go shopping. This area now is literally just a complete Muslim area. So driving through this area, are you unwelcome here? Oh yeah, I'm completely unwelcome here, yeah. What would happen if you were to walk through the streets here? If I was walking the streets, I'd get battered. If I tried to walk from one end to the other, I wouldn't get out. Because they get on their phones so quickly. They're safe in Islam. That one there. That's, yeah, he's the leader. What have I got to talk to you about? What have I got to talk to you about? Huh? What have I got to talk to you about? What have I got to say about Islam and that, innit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah. So why didn't you say it now? What do you want me to say? Yeah? It's yeah. ideology, it's got no place. Yeah? yeah? it's got no place, bruv. And what you Shabbat got? Shabbat law's got no place what in this you country. Got? What do you mean, what have I got? Go on, tell me, what do you, what do you stand for? What do I stand for? Yeah, what do you stand, stand for? for? Equation, bruv. I, don't, I don't stand for paedophilic yeah? practices, yeah? yeah? Yeah. What do you stand for? Go on, tell me. What do you mean, what do I stand racism for? What do you stand hatred. for? How's it racism? Hey. How's it racism? How's it racist to oppose a fascist ideology? Fascist ideology? This fascist. What do you? You're racist. How am I racist? You hate what, Asians, what, yeah? what race, what race yeah, are Asians? Yeah. What race are Muslims? Uh, I, I heard. Come on, Cloud. Where are you running away oh, from? Because I know, you, you, I, I know, I know what you like, brother. You have about 100 you in a minute. You f***ing little chief. You f***ing chief.
prick, you see? That is, that is Islam. You f***ing little prick. The thing is, you get out of this car, they'll be here from everywhere. Watch, watch. Watch how many of them now turn up, watch. Watch how many of them now turn up. I'll do, I'll do your window up so you can't get out, because I'm telling you, look. Police dogs might have to wear booties when they search Muslim homes to avoid offending Muslims who believe dogs are unclean. It's somewhat astonishing that in a nation of 60 million people, a couple million Muslims could cause so much concern. So-called hate speech is illegal in Britain, but it depends on who is doing the hating. When these British citizens protested the Mohammed cartoons at the Danish Embassy in London in 2006, they expressed their allegiance to terrorists. They called for beheadings and nuclear attacks. British police arrested no one. Compare that to when a British news program exposed violent rhetoric in local mosques. British police initially decided to charge not the radical imams who were promoting violence and bigotry, but the news program that did the report for allegedly stirring up racial hatred. When former drug dealer and now born-again Christian Paul Ray wrote in his blog that the Muslim drug gangs in his hometown of Luton were savages, he was arrested on suspicion of a hate crime. It's okay for the Muslims to do what they're doing um, and no one arrests them, but then if we start saying and disagreeing with what's actually happening, you know, we're breaching community cohesion and um, we get arrested for it. It's just how things are now in this country if we speak out or say anything against the protected species, Islam and Muslims. Paul Ray fled Britain after this interview because of threats against his life from Muslim gangs. Whole sections of Britain are now considered dangerous no-go zones for non-Muslims. They're discriminating against the majority people in Europe now in favor of the Islamists and Muslims. And uh, the way we're going, we're going to be taken back to the stoning age. So you're now branded racist, Islamophobic or neo-Nazi if you speak out against Islam. But at least one study shows that most British Muslims don't want Sharia law. A lot of Muslims came here to escape it. Yet it might be foisted on them anyway by political leaders. It's clear that multiculturalism and political correctness have backfired badly. The hardcore Islamists have not been assimilated into society. But Britain's confidence in democracy and Christian civilization have been seriously weakened. Germany is facing a drastic number of refugees by the end of 2015, believed to be in the region of 1.5 million. It is not quite on a biblical scale, but an exodus it certainly is. Migrants who've been trapped at the railway station in Budapest now deciding to walk the hundreds of miles to Germany and what they see as the promised land. The other side of this tragedy is how it will change Europe. Non-Western migrants had already been flooding into Europe for decades. Leaders refused to stop it. We are afraid. We are in danger every day, every minute. They are coming inside the police. They want to kill each other. We have to, you have to do something. Someone has to protect us. They are in our house. We are the victims. We are not them. We have to live like before. We have to live our life. They took it for us. We're not in war. They are. They have to take them from here. It's a city. No place for people like them.